With its COVID protocols, the NFL is implementing medical Jim Crow, and Joe Biden loves it. That's from the latest edition uh, of uh, the Blaze podcast from Jason Whitlock, who's joining us now. Hi, Jason. Hey, Glenn. How are you? Happy Monday. Yeah, thank you. So I've been, I heard this uh, about the NFL over the weekend, and I'm not qualified to talk about it at all. So I thought I'd let you and Stu talk about it. Let you and Stu talk about it. You know, for the people who, you know, want something halfway accurate. Perfect. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm here to do it. This okay. Is... So what do you mean by modern-day Jim Crow? Well, uh, to be quite honest with you, Tucker Carlson coined the phrase medical Jim Crow. Uh, a couple of months ago, he was talking about how these COVID restrictions are going to negatively impact black Americans because we are the most reluctant by all the data. All the data says we are the most reluctant to take the COVID vaccines. And we're seeing it play out in the National Football League. The, the, the NFL has implemented some rules in terms of even if you're unvaccinated, and you breach any of the protocols they set up, including not having your mask on 24-7 whenever you're in the building, you're going to face a $14,000 fine. If, if your team has some kind of COVID uh, outbreak that involves an unvaccinated player, you, your team could be forced to forfeit games and paychecks. All of this, all of these restrictions, based on the data and the research and who's getting the vaccines, are going to disproportionately impact black NFL players negatively. And it's how these COVID restrictions, again, the, the left loves to talk about, oh, Jim Crow voter suppression. It's Jim Crow 2.0. And it's, look, these rules requiring an ID are going to negatively impact poor black and brown people. And it's all BS, uh, Glenn. I have yet this this whole voter ID deal. It's a victimless crime in terms of I haven't seen any proof that black people are showing up at the polls and being turned away because they have no ID or they're sitting at home. Oh, I got no ID. I can't do voter mail or whatever. It's all garbage. What actually is legitimate is what's going on with these COVID restrictions, but you won't hear anybody on the left talk about it. Okay, so why is it that the, the black community is is the worst at not getting vaccinated? Uh, no group of people has been preached to mm. more aggressively, don't trust the government. Right? Than black people. Stu, we were right. <laughs> Stu and I were talking about this this morning, and we we're like, if you're black, why would you take it? You're being told everybody is trying to kill you. Here, take yeah. this vaccine. And look, there have been examples of the, the Tuskegee Syphilis Project that, you know, from the 1930s that really damaged black men, and we were basically lab rats. Yeah. Uh, and so that's part of our history. But, again, it's part of our history. What's going on today is corporate media and the Democratic puppet masters Every day telling black people, man, this government is out to get you. It's systemically racist. You have no shot. And so it makes perfect sense for black people to say, man, I'm not going to trust an experimental, an experimental vaccine that hasn't gone through all the proper normal uh, protocols and channels that vaccines go through before they're issued in mass it, it, it makes perfect sense for us to be the least likely to go get the shot so why then is the media attacking trump supporters when that's not it's not even true why are they going after people um <laughs> and not mentioning blacks and hispanics which are far yeah. more less likely to get vaccinated because all the corporate media does is lie, and they particularly lie about race issues, and they want to demonize, oh, my God, there's this Delta variant, and it's Trump supporters. And, and again, it's almost like there are two dishonest messages confusing black people. One is 
the government's out to get you, and, and they're, they're plotting every day on how they can kill you. And two is, oh, man, these Trump supporters, they're destroying America for you, and you must hate them because they're your mortal enemies. And, and Glenn, I, I'm, I'm going to go to my death saying Trump supporters and black people are natural allies. Mm-hmm. Both groups need to wake up mm-hmm. and, and understand we're we're not the elites and and I, I you know it's Glenn Beck is worth a gazillion dollars I'm worth a lot of money I get when people oh well you guys are elites too our mentality is an elite uh, you know our faith in a higher power makes us humble ourselves and have a different world view and so even though I'm wealthy, I'm not an elite. I have a working class mentality. Well, you and- know, it, beyond that, I, you know, I don't think it matters when we're all saying everyone should have the same opportunity and shot. In your uh, in your article, you talk about um, a player from Arizona and Tampa that uh, spoke out last week about this, and yeah. you said we can't be cowards and sheep forever. What do you mean? Well, DeAndre Hopkins, the Arizona Cardinal wide receiver, has expressed his reluctance and concern about the vaccine. Leonard Fournette, who plays with Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, just won the Super Bowl. He's tweeted out he doesn't want to get the vaccine. And I I just think that what initially started out in corporate sports media was they were going to frame Cole Beasley, this white wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. He was the first to, to start speaking up, and he, he was actually doing it probably on behalf of his black teammates who were probably too afraid to speak up because they just don't want to deal with the social media backlash. And so the media was going to frame like Cole Beasley. He's the only one. And it's white guys, and he's a Trump supporter, and you know he's against the vaccine. And and so I'm just glad to see DeAndre Hopkins and Leonard Fournette express what I know many black people think and feel. The data backs it up. That's how we think and feel. Certainly in those, those NFL locker rooms aren't immune to what the rest of us think and feel. Ezekiel Elliott. You know, the Cowboys running back came out and said, look, man, I grew up in a family where none of us got vaccinated. We, we just didn't believe in any, of the va- <laughs> in any of the vaccines. And that's prevalent among black people. And we don't we, we got to quit being in fear of the social media mob and the left framing us as idiots or sellouts or whatever. We got to man up like DeAndre Hopkins and Leonard Fournette and Cole Beasley and speak our truth. So do you do you actually believe you said that um, this COVID nineteen uh, is is going to make uh, the Emancipation Proclamation? I, I'm trying to figure out what I, what I'm trying to find it. Go, do you remember what you wrote? Yeah, I yeah. said that these restrictions that the NFL are implementing are going to make. Uh, they're going to come off like stop and frisk in old New York. Or they're going to make stop and frisk feel like the Emancipation Proclamation and Juneteenth wrapped all into one. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And do you believe that? Uh, To some degree, yes. Now, look, I'm being entertaining in a column, and I want to say things that people remember just like you did. I did remember. Well, I (laughs) barely remembered it, but that was the line that stuck out. Yeah. Um, and and it's just an analogy. To like this is the same way we complained about stop and frisk in New York. It's targeting black people. Targeting black people. This COVID restriction. It's targeting black NFL players. The the, the data speaks for itself.